Okay, we are done. Okay, here is our wiffle ball backstop. This is what we use to know if a strike is thrown or not. It's essentially a bunch of PVC pipe and some sheet metal, makes a nice sound. The problem is, in a game the other day, somebody swung a bat and it went right through it. So I've had this thing about 10 years. It has stood the test of time, but it finally met its fate. So we're gonna build another one. Um, I'm gonna change the design a little bit. The problem with this design, if you see here, are the legs. Because there's plenty of times where somebody will throw a ball, it'll hit right here, and then we scream and yell at each other and argue if that was a strike or a ball. So, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna build another one, except we're gonna put uh, some T joints here and it's gonna come out and then down to the base. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna bring the legs back and um, hopefully we'll eliminate a whole bunch of arguing. So we've got uh, our makeshift table set up here. I have all the supplies, um, but I'll go over that in a bit. Right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut, cut, cut. We'll put it together, make sure it works and it fits. And then if it does, we'll glue it and assemble it for real. I'll get you all the measurements after I do the cutting and assemble it because I have plans, but I may need to uh, make some adjustments. So. Once we cut and assemble and it works, then we'll go through the measurements. But basically we're starting with two 10 foot, uh, two 10 foot PVC pipes. And we've got, let me see my list here, 10, uh, 10 corner joints, four T joints. So that's the base here. So let me cut, we'll start to assemble and uh, we'll see what this looks like in a couple minutes. have our final dimension so you see I took the um, sheet metal out of that one and I was sizing it to this one so um, it's probably hard to tell but these are the, the strike zones identical basically what's changed is the base here and I told you before the reason I changed this base is because if we come to the side I like that those legs are set back a little bit so that if somebody throws a ball and it hits right here we're not gonna be screaming and yelling and cursing at each other because that won't happen Anything is in play. So if the ball hits here, it's in play. Hits in the middle, it's in play. Anything in the uh, in the rectangle is in play, basically. So that should eliminate a lot of arguments. So let's go over the final dimensions. So um, this top crossbar is 15 inches. The two downs, this side and that side, are 21 inches. This bottom is what required all of the finagling. So we have a four inch, a five and a quarter, and a four, okay? This could just be five if you want, but I felt with all of these joints, you know, you lose some here, you lose some here, you lose some here. So I did five and a quarter and it fits perfect. So four, five and a quarter, four. And these are the dimensions of the actual pipe. I'm not measuring between the fittings. It's the pipe itself. Those are your cut, your cut numbers. Coming off the back, we have two sevens. So seven inches, seven inches. We go down, our downs are 15. So same as the crossbar. Our back here is nine and a half. Inside here, we have a four. 
Inside here we have a four. And if we come around, our front legs are 16. And then our middle is 11. So this thing is very sturdy. I made it out of one and a quarter inch PVC pipe. Um, you could do one and a half. I like one and a quarter. I feel like it's a happy medium. And there are different qualities. So there's much thicker, heavier, more durable pipe. You actually should use those. This way it's more stable, it's more durable, it's heavier, it's not gonna get knocked over in the wind. This thing is pretty rock solid now. Uh, a trick is you can put some sand in the base. So right here where those legs connect, you can just pull those out, dump some sand in the base and really weigh it down. Um, if for some reason it's super windy. But I was going to glue this, but it is tight. I've had to open it up a few times to, um, uh, I've had to open it up a few times to, you know, check different measurements and put in different pieces. And it's really hard. This thing's not falling apart on its own. Um, I made sure it was super tight and it's definitely super tight. So I don't think I need to glue it. Um, now the next step is I'm going to spray paint it. I'll probably do that tomorrow because it's getting dark. Uh, I'm going to spray paint the hell out of it. And then we're going to zip tie the tin. So I made it so that my tin covers basically, you know, it's, it's touching. It almost is resting on the front because um, it's really tight fit. I like it that way. I don't want the gaps, but certainly you can do the gaps and we'll see what happens over time if the tin starts to scrape away the paint. But if it does, I'll just paint it again. We're just zip tying it on. So we'll be back tomorrow to do the tin or the, I keep calling it tin, it's sheet metal. But we'll be back tomorrow to do that and then uh, we should be all set. Okay, we've got her painted. Uh, I gotta tell you, the painting was pretty annoying because all of these little connections and seams, you really have to load up with paint to make sure it gets in there. But it's painted, uh, took a few, I don't wanna say coats, but every time the legs would dry and then you lift it, uh, it would peel off a little bit. So took a few coats, if you will, a lot of touch up, but um, overall came out really well. And uh, now we are going to put the sheet metal on. So we're just gonna use some zip ties to get that done. Uh, my sheet metal, I'm reusing it, but for you to poke holes in there, you can use a drill bit or just uh, a hammer and a nail uh, to poke the holes in the, in the sheet metal. So. I'm gonna put it up, we'll get it zip tied, and then we will be 100% done. Okay, we are done. Uh, pretty easy, straightforward process. Honestly, the most annoying part was getting the measurements right on all of these pieces down here. Um, but that was my problem and not yours because I the final dimensions I mentioned them earlier and then I'll I'll put them in the um, in the description as well so you see I spray painted it top to bottom uh, that was kind of annoying because of the joints and um, you know it's a little little awkward shape so you use quite a bit and you try to get it not to drip but overall it came out really well uh, I know people are gonna give me a hard time saying oh official wiffle ball needs to be these are the dimensions. So you can adjust the dimensions any way you want. If it needs to be taller, just make these legs longer. These two here. That's how you adjust your height. And then obviously the width will just be this pipe and this pipe. Um, but overall, it's a pretty big strike zone because keep in mind, for me, it's not just the tin. It's gonna be the, the, um, the corners and the piping around it as well so that there's no arguments whatsoever. And we did the offset legs so that there's no arguments there as well. So it was pretty cool, pretty fun. Uh, $45 worth of surprise. Uh, I didn't use the glue. Um, you know, and I used inch and a quarter of PVC. You can certainly use uh, thicker or smaller, but I feel like this is a good, uh, there's some heft here and it's durable, but it's not, um, it's not 500 pounds either. So overall, it was a lot of fun to build. I can't wait to uh, hum balls at it. I did two pieces of sheet metal. Feel like it's a little louder but uh that's all your call and then you see we zip tied it together and then behind it i just made sure i tucked uh the actual connections back just to keep it as clean as possible but uh ultimately you can do what you want i may end up repainting the corners a completely different color to make it stand out especially if we play at night but oh well these are uh, a little too old to be doing this stuff anyway this is a little kid stuff but 
Uh, it was fun to build. Can't wait to use it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.